Regarding the Ryder Cup, I think if you'd gone back two or three months, a number of people were concerned that Europe may not have a very good team. Thomas Bjorn, the captain, was worried about uh, had he got the right number of picks. He's picking four. Uh, I think suddenly after the early tournaments, uh, from late June to early July, have suddenly thrown up some players that uh, begin to make the European side look very good indeed. I'm, I'm very hopeful because the American side six months ago looked tremendous and now it's getting even more solid and even. I think it'll be a great match. Thomas, I don't envy Thomas Bjorn picking uh, because there are about seven or eight young, young players uh, who've never played in the Ryder Cup before who may be worth a mention. Uh, 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 Knox from America, young a Scottish, well he's 31, he's not a kid. Um, he's been playing most of his golf in America. I think he's lived there since he was a young lad. Uh, he's a member of our tour and I think he could be a, a very good acquisition to the Ryder Cup. And there's four or five others now, more than that, five or six. So I don't envy him. You look at the lists and you say, and do you, do you favor, do you lean towards some of the old timers who've given you good service in the past? Lee Westwood comes to mind, but Westwood was disappointing in the last Ryder Cup. So does he, has he come to the end of his time? It'll be, it'll be very interesting. I don't envy him his task. You know, I've been doing a few jobs for champion speakers over the years. And the one thing I've always enjoyed, I'm not a great one for going on speaking engagements and so on, but they've always been so professional, so much fun, that it's been a, a labor of love and they've actually paid me. So I'm absolutely delighted. Long may you prosper.